I'm Michael Bowers. I'm talking pitches this morning with the independent member for New England, Tony Windsor. Welcome to the program, Tony. Oh, pleasure, Mike. Since the, almost the election night, you've been under intense media scrutiny. What, what's it like to sort of go from being you know, an, an independent and representing your electorate to being put under that rarefied where you're making a decision that's going to affect the whole country? It must be a tough thing when suddenly all your moves are analysed and you've got to watch what you say on camera and... Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Re- I didn't realise that was in the script. <laughs> like, oh God, I made a mistake. <laughs> no, if you've been farming, I think farming is actually a great apprenticeship for this job because you're put under a lot of different stresses and strains. So I find this job, uh, you know, quite relaxing in terms of <laughs> compared to some of the other things I've had to do in life. There's a whole host of pictures of you, sort of, uh, you know, being the country gentleman. It's a, do you, do you country get, gentleman. Yeah, do you ever get sick of getting posed against sort of, you know, beautiful New England backdrops? Oh, well, that's where I live. Yeah. Uh, and I love where I live. I want to die where I live. Yeah. And uh, I want to be buried not far from that stump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, this, uh, this, this picture of you in the, in, the, in the sunflower, I was looking at you uh, a few weeks back in the Parliament and there was, certainly wasn't a, a, a sea of sunflower faces I saw. It was... <laughs> Uh, you sitting amongst the cross benches amongst almost the enemy. Well, my uh, love is of the land. I uh, have a great affinity with the land. I can understand why Aboriginal people uh, really feel as though they belong to the land. And uh, uh, this uh, young boy here, he's now 28, yeah. and, and he's, uh, he's now farming, so... The circle's complete, in a sense. You've had sort of a, 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 an on-and-off uh, relationship with the Nationals, who were the traditional sort of, you know, representatives, I guess, of, of rural areas. David Pope's picked up on this one. It's got, uh, it's got you and Rob Oakshot about to be crowned by uh, Her Majesty <laughs> Julia with uh, coronation fireworks, uh, no National Party head exploding. Well, I think they'd always assumed that they were the rulers of country Australia and uh, you know, Barnaby Joyce was trying to exert his uh, esteemed leadership on election night and uh, we had a bit of an exploding heads event. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but that's, uh, that's gone by the, the by now. And, uh, most of the nationals are going very well with. I love this picture. It's down at Aussie's Cafe, which is a, a parliamentary um, cafe that's very famous. But uh, just behind sort of Bob here, as you guys are sort of deliberate, <laughs> deliberating which way to go, is the devil himself. Yes, the devil, <laughs> the spook, <laughs> Uncle Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he's out of his cabin there. <laughs> not, not out of his tree, but not, he's out of his cabin. <laughs> he's, um, he's just one of the great characters of Parliament, I think. Oh, he's a good fellow, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, he and I have disagreed on a number of things, but, uh, but I love him. He's a, he is a character. Tony, here's a great Tambo cartoon. How long do we have to stay like this until tomorrow? It's a Liberal and Labor. It's a, <laughs> with the new paradigm, have you, do you feel like you've actually forced them together and it's, or is there genuine love in the house now? You don't have to pick your partner, I think, in this place from now on. <laughs> I'm, I've sort of got eyes for Chris Pine because <laughs> he wasn't that accommodating last night. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he's a very handsome man, Mr Pine. Who would <laughs> This wonderful David Pope, Pride Without Prejudice, um, and, and it's got uh, Rob O'Shea. Shot and, and Bob, Bob sort of there and and he's just a, he's a gift for the cartoonist because of his hat yeah. uh, and his leather briefcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's toilet paper in it. You know, I looked inside. There's nothing there. <laughs> It's got Rob saying, uh, we realise uh, it's dreadfully old-fashioned, gentlemen, but we uh, have asked Dr Henry <laughs> to, to, to cast his eye over the economic prospects. Did you expect that result when it came out? No. <laughs> no, but it was a test of the truthfulness yeah. of our political process. And unfortunately, Tony Abbott got caught. No, they, don't, they all do it. <laughs> they get through the election and then rearrange the numbers. That um, first press conference where you sort of came out, uh, you know, said this is what we're going to do. Uh, Rob sort of spoke famously for 17 minutes. What were you thinking when that was going on? <laughs> I started to look at how many pages there were on, <laughs> 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 on his speech. <laughs> yeah, and it, and I could see there were the more to come. I thought, uh, <laughs> the days of our lives would be over. <laughs> he wanted to spell out the process that we'd been through, and it was an involved process. So yeah. I'm very defensive of what... Uh, of what he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he'll live with that forever now, yeah. <laughs> the 17 minute man. Tony, it's been a great pleasure talking to you and, uh, and I'm just so full of the new paradigm love. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Back to you, Barry. <laughs>